Our correspondent Brian Carter is following events closely from Brussels and he's joining me now live. Brian, we've already seen a, a war of words and it hasn't even begun. What can we expect today from the NATO summit? Well, for starters, heavy security. I haven't seen this level of security in Brussels since the lockdown of 2015. According to the Belgian authorities, 2,500 policemen and 1,000 soldiers have been mobilized to ensure the security of this meeting, to ensure the security of the leaders. Uh, as you can see in this area behind me, that's where the leaders will have their dinner tonight. It's been closed to the public and there's heavy police presence everywhere. And just as the uh, Donald Trump disrupted the city traffic, he's expected, as you heard, to disrupt the official agenda. Agenda, which is supposed to talk about cybersecurity, common, uh, common defense, deterrence, etc. But uh, leader, uh, the European leaders are bracing for the worst. They all remember the meeting here last year where he scolded them about defense spending. And everybody here is wondering if he could go further this time. We spoke with Thomas Valasek. He's a researcher at, at Carnegie Europe. And he's also the former representative of Slovakia to NATO. Take a listen. Of 2018, is different from the Donald Trump of 2017. He is, he's grown more comfortable in his skin. He is more um, willing to challenge the status quo, consequences be damned. He is less restrained by people around him. In fact, the new people around him, whether it's Mike Pompeo at the Department of State or John Bolton in the National Security Council, if anything, seem to be urging him, egging him on rather than restraining him. So, um, you know, the, the NATO heads and the ambassadors are braced for, uh, for quite a tough summit. Yeah, exactly. And you heard it as well before in the story you heard. The crucial issue here is money. The U.S. spends about $600 billion per year on defense. That's twice what the other members of NATO spent together. And Donald Trump has expressed his anger over this many times. There's a distinction here to be made, an important distinction. On the one hand, you have the... Uh, the budget for NATO, which is the to ensure the day-to-day -day activities, and here all the members pay their fair share based on the calculation on based on GDP, population, etc. But what Donald Trump is aiming at is the two percent target, which is a pledge that the Allies made in 2014 that by 2024 uh, they would reach two percent of GDP on defense spending. Now only eight members of NATO respect that target uh, this year, and most members have increased the defense spending, but it's not going fast enough for. Donald Trump. And now this 2% uh, target is not just a symbolic uh, target that it is easy to explain, but it's also has a, it also has an important uh, value, as Thomas Valasek will explain right now. The Allies don't spend 2% on building national forces. Uh, they are not going to have enough tanks, enough ships that NATO needs to put together in, in, in sort of a coherent force for its operations. So yes, the, the Allies can easily meet all of their commitments to the narrow, narrowly defined NATO defense budget. But that again just pays for basically the buildings, it pays for the electricity, uh, the copy machines at the headquarters. It doesn't pay for the forces that Allies put into operations. That comes out of the nationally spent uh, defense budgets. Uh, that's why the 2% are important. And of course, the fear here is that Donald Trump will use the troops here in Europe as a bargaining chip to force the, the other allies to spend more. There are roughly 60,000 U.S. men and women in uniform here in Europe. And if he uh, decreases their number, that could destabilize uh, the, the power forces here in, uh, in Europe, destabilize the region. Now, some say that that fear is overblown. After all, Russia is not the USSR and Russia's defense spending is lower than all the non-U.S. NATO allies put together. Uh, but some say that uh, if you look at Ukraine, if you look at Georgia, uh, that indeed Russia is still a danger. And of course, knowing that Donald Trump will meet with Vladimir Putin next week in Helsinki, uh, the big question is what will they say, what will they decide, and will Vladimir Putin have the last word?